International Music Competition, and it is uh, all, uh, concerning the Korean theme. So music playing with the Korean theme, using Western instrument, writing Korean shijo poetry in English, uh, and also uh, reading Korean literature and writing essay. So our competition is open to uh, mostly younger generation, 25 years and younger, or the uh, 12th grade and younger. So for writing competition, we have uh, the $1,000 uh, first place prize for adult uh, division, that is 25 years and younger. Senior essay, uh, also $500, junior essay, $300. Shizu uh, also the first place winner is 500. You will see Shizu is a very short poem, three lines, 45 syllables, and uh, think about getting $500 for three line uh, poem. So uh, the deadline is usually at the end of February or March of uh, every year. So even if you are not English teacher, you can still encourage uh, your student to learn about this and enter the competition and they get the prize. So we have uh, seen teachers of history, social studies, uh, art, all, all disciplines, they encourage their students to enter our competition. So we get about 1,000 Shijo entry every year from all over US and Canada. And uh, the getting a prize is really significant achieve achievement for your student. And then we have resource page. There are a number of uh, resources, uh, not only Shizu poetry and literature, but also Korean history. There are already ready-made uh, PowerPoint you can use, you can modify for your class. Uh, because I know that making PowerPoint takes so much time. And then we have a collection of video. This is the uh, address uh, where you can see the lecture on Shijo. So there's a, a professor from Harvard University and Brigham Young University. They uh, talk about Shijo. And we have high school teachers teaching Shijo class. So we have an entire class. Uh, videotaped and it's on the uh, YouTube, so you can watch how they teach. So it was in response to teachers that some teachers asked me, I want to teach, but I don't know how to. So we videotaped this, so uh, i show you some samples, and then we have some music concert. This is a class for elementary students, and there is a teaching plans and all of this. So. Uh, so we went to Virginia, Tennessee, Wisconsin, and Colorado. This was a history teacher who teaches Shijo. So when I asked her, why do you teach Shijo poetry in the history class? And he said, you know, culture is part of history, so they have to know this. And uh, the, we contacted these teachers because some of their students won uh, prizes year after year. So you can watch an entire class. So uh, the, these classes are uh, two classes, the, in, the initial class teaching Shijo, and then second uh, videotape is doing a follow-up. So reading the student teach, uh, Shijo, and then giving uh, feedback, because giving feedback was another question. How do we give feedback? So we have all the samples over there. We also uh, do She's a workshop for the English teacher, but we accept teachers from other disciplines too. So it is mostly in Chicago. We have done uh, organized she's a lecture at Poetry Foundation in Chicago, and we have done some music concert. So the next she's a workshop will be in November uh, 10th and 11th. So we will be comparing Korean, Japanese, Chinese poetry and uh, also there will be a lecture about Korean literature and pansori. Pansori is oral tradition, so singing the story. Uh, so, uh, so we will have Professor Park from Ohio State University who will be talking at the lecture, who will give lecture and uh, uh, perform pansori. And this is a picture of Shijo workshop we had last May. So every year we have this workshop 
uh, in collaboration with Indiana University East Asian Studies Center. So, Shijo. So, it's a pronounced Shijo, and it is a traditional Korean poetic form. And as you heard many times, Shijo uh, was developed several hundred years before haiku. Uh, how many people have written haiku? Raise your hand. Yes, I know, everybody write haiku in the grade school, right? But then this is cousin of Shijo, and I've heard people say, oh, this is so much better because it's longer, you can put more ideas, and how come we never heard about this? So that's why I'm talking about this. And uh, so the uh, haiku tend to be more like a nature, but the Korean shijo covers many different topics. Nature, metaphysical, cosmological, love songs, political statements, and instructional to uh, give instruction to children. And uh, uh, commoners, the king wants to give instruction to commoners like that. So it is uh, organized in three lines, and it's 45 syllables. So first line, second line, third line, each line is 15 syllables. So introduce uh, the theme in the first line. Second line, uh, you expand or develop the idea. And the third line is interesting part where you give a surprise ending at the beginning of the third line. Or well, sometimes it is very humorous. So very well written shijo really stands out because of great uh, this point or the surprise ending we see on the third line. So the syllable count goes, the first line is 3, 4, 4, 4, second line 3, 4, 4, 4, third line is 3, 5, 4, 3, emphasizes uh, 3 at the beginning of third line. So many uh, traditional Korean shijo said you can have variation of all the others except this one. So third line start with 3 and then that's where you have to put some kind of surprise. But I mean, it, that is the principle and the basic form, but it can be a little bit different. So it can be uh, written in like it's six lines by breaking this each line into uh, two, uh, or it, it can be written each line as one line. So roughly about 15 syllables in each line, but it can be 13 to 17, but altogether about 43 to 47. So this is a great uh, Shijo poet from 16th century. It is called Song of My Five Friends. You ask how many friends I have? Water and stone, bamboo and pine. The moon rising over the eastern hill is a joyful comrade. Besides these five companions, what other pleasure should I ask? So in Korean, uh, you, you know there's consonant and vowels, or consonant, vowel, consonant. So each block is one syllable. So it goes three, five, three, four, instead of three, four, four, four. Uh, three, four, three, four, three, five, four, four. So it's roughly uh, it's 15 in each. So great translators, they translate roughly similar, 15 syllables each, each line. They cannot make it exactly three, four, 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 three, four, four, four but similarly. So I think translation of poem is so hard. So you have to be a poet. You have to have some kind of uh, talent because it, it, when you translate, it's not just a meaning. It has to be poetic too. And Shizhou was originally a uh, song. So in the old days, we used Chinese character, but the Shizhou was really written in Korean language and song. So it was uh, accompanied by bamboo flute and uh, the percussion instrument called Changgu. And the singer will be in the center, either seated or stand. And it is played with very slow delivery pace. So uh, I, I met a group in Seoul who is teaching Shijo Chang. Chang means sing, singing Shijo. And they said, come and join our group. And they sing Shijo Chang and this will be your meditation. <laughs> and the getaway you're from busy life, join us. That was their slogan. So
So we will just uh, listen to Shizhou Chang. This is a great uh, Shizhou Chang singer. Rich people, 
in the capital uh, city, talked about Peng Jinhe, how beautiful and how great she was, and she was living in another town that was you know, uh, several hundred miles away. So Peng Jinhe heard about that and said, oh, even she's very beautiful, no, I wouldn't fall for uh, you know, beauty like that. So all the other guys I said, you want to bet? So he decided to go to there. <laughs> so all other guys bet on, you know, on this guy. So Peng Su uh, was going to that town where she was living, Kaesong, and she heard about that, that bet, and Peng Su is coming to see her. So she wrote this poem, and then she was waiting at the gate of that Kaesong. Uh, in old days, the uh, town had a big high wall and the gate, and on top of the gate there was a sitting area. So she was sitting on top of the gate and then uh, singing this song. So he, he was on a mule and then as he heard us, uh, her singing and listened to that, and it just uh, he completely fell, uh, fell into her, so she, he fell off the mule. And the funniest uh, story is she didn't meet him. Meet him. He waited for a week, but uh, she refused to see him. So the the legend is around that time the women were the second class citizens, and uh, the women against men. She just totally made uh, this um, man. Uh, it's not just men; it's the nephew of the king. Uh, she refused to see him, and uh, she was the lowest class. And then she refused to see the royal class. So uh, this is just a great uh, like women <laughs> standing against the men or the slave uh, classes standing against the women yeah, class. Okay, Ibang Wan uh, is from 14th century. He was the third king of the Yi dynasty, the last uh, the Korean kingdom. Uh, so Ibang Wan's father was the founding. Uh, King of the Yi Dynasty. So at the end of the Goryeo Dynasty, the things were really bad for common people. The uh, officials were really corrupt and they were so hungry and everything was in bad shape. So his father decided to uh, stage coup. So Yi Bang Wan was the uh, one who really helped his father to do that. So he went to talk to uh, this guy, uh, Zhong Mongju was the prime minister of the last king of Goryeo dynasty. So he went to see him and instead of just saying, hey, why don't you join my father and our group for Kuteta? Instead of that, he just sang this song at a party. So what difference does it make, this way or that? The tangled vines of Mansu's Han Mansusan is a mountain. Mansusan in profusion grow and twine. We too could be like that and live together a hundred years. So Zhong Mongju's answer was he immediately answered back with the Shizhou. Though this body die and die, it may die a hundred times. My white bones become but dust. What's called soul exists or not? For my lord, no part of this red heart would ever change. How could it? So he got the answer. So on, on his way home, Ivan once sent the assassin, so he was killed. So in, in uh, that area is in the North, North Korean territory. So that area is uh, preserved. That bridge where he was assassinated. It has been preserved, and they said there is a still blood stain on the brick. <laughs> and this is another great poet, a poet from 16th century, the greatest uh, poet. A shadow strikes the water flow, a monk passes by on the bridge. Stay a while, Reverend Sir, let me ask you where you go. He just points his staff at the white clouds and keeps on his way without turning. So, uh, well, it, it could be just a beautiful scenery where the monk is passing over the bridge, but some said that the Buddhist monk, they have to study hard to get enlightened. Uh, 
So uh, the secular people just keep poking, like, uh, hey, <laughs> you know, talk to me and you know, come to uh, our, you know, our meetings. And he just uh, doesn't even talk. He kept going on his study. So this is a great poem to discuss uh, with your friends. And you, uh, many of you know Linda Supar. Uh, she wrote many great uh, short, uh, children's study, uh, uh, the short stories. Uh, initially, she, her stories were based on Korean uh, old history, but lately she's writing some like almost a sci-fi uh, type of things. So she's a prolific writer. And uh, while she was uh, researching her route, then she found this uh, Shizhou uh, poem. So she published the book, Tap Dancing on the Roof. And it is from this book, Breakfast. For this meal, people like what they like. The same thing every morning. Toast and coffee, bagel and juice, cornflakes and milk in a white bowl. Or warm, soft, delicious, a few extra minutes in bed. So she has uh, this great sense of uh, giving surprise ending. So uh, at the end of this uh, my talk, I hope you can get an idea how to write shijo and then write shijo and by tomorrow morning you submit it and then uh, tomorrow afternoon we'll have a time to share your shijo and this book will be the prize for those who submit the shijo and read, this, uh, read your shijo with us. And Professor McCann is at Harvard University, he just retired. Uh, he teaches Shijo at the Harvard University. He went to Korea as a, a Peace Corps, and he lived in Andong, um, it's a small town on the uh, countryside. So his boarding house was on top of the pig pen. So whenever he went in and out of his room, the pig <laughs> grunted. So one night in Andong, after a tour of back alley wine shops, had the spinning I staggered down the narrow panic field path. When the two pigs grunted, so you home at last. <laughs> and then he wrote English Shizho and he wrote also Korean Shizho. So if you are if you are bilingual, you can do that. You can write Shizho in Spanish, Shizho in English. Yeah, there are Spanish Shizho uh, poems too. And Larry Gross was an English professor from the Chicago area, uh, moved to Florida. Rising early each morning, I let her into the world. I pour old cleaner store, then fork more hay into the truck. When she kicks my hand away, why do I think of my wife? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Ed, uh, Taylor won Second place uh, in our uh, right, Shizhou competition in 2009, and you ask me what I'm humming. I tell you, I'm humming about nothing. This is untrue because I'm humming about you all day long. Who am I to tell you you are nothing when you are my song? And she was only 10th grade and she wrote this. So now, this was the original English Shizhou and then the Koreans translated into Korean. So I, I sent this to Korea and they said, what is this? <laughs> they had to translate so they can see what it is. And Michael Chong was only a fifth grader from Los Angeles. And then she won, he won third place in 2008. Such a pretty uh, face. <laughs> I'm floating on the dark lake, dreaming I'm floating on the cloud. The surface of my tents continuing as water dries on me. A man yells, hello, good neighbor, breaking my dreams to pieces. So uh, we, because we are getting uh, shizo from all over the country, uh, we don't have a award ceremony. We just uh, post the, uh, the, like a statement on our website, a picture and the statement. So we asked him, send us your statement. And then, he said he's the 15th generation grandson uh, of Zhong Chao, who wrote about the monk going over the bridge. So he said, no wonder <laughs> only fifth grader wrote such a great, uh, great shizhou. We couldn't really uh, translate 
to fit the 3444, the syllable count is off because we couldn't really fit it very well. Uh, so the basic form is what I explained, but uh, this is what the Korean Shizu poet uh, sent me recently. It can be A, A dash, A, A two dash. So this is just a first statement and the next next step and next step. So you can do just a stepwise um, uh, statement. When grasses drink the spring rain, new sprouts and blades spring up. When flowers drink the spring rain, flowers bloom and fragrance emerge. When my heart drinks the spring rain, a poet inside of me is awakened. So it's not that kind of surprise ending, but it's a stepwise uh, development. And this is A, A dash. So there was a similar, uh, similar uh, extension, but then thought one is a little, little different. So it doesn't have to be like a punchline, but still, uh, you can do this. The smallest house in our village, Buni's little shanty house. Buni is a little girl's name. The tallest tree in our village, Buni's apricot tree. Bursting into a full bloom overnight, it looms larger than a king's palace. So the, the thought line is, again, it's not a surprise ending, but it is a little different and making statement. This is my favorite, it's the inversion, A. So he, he is, puts a uh, conclusion first, and then explain and explain. So sparrows <coughs> sitting on power lines compose new music. Tiny bodies are music notes, measure after measure, busily chopping, twirling, fine tuning the new melody. So uh, in all days, we saw a lot of power lines and a lot of sparrows sitting on the power lines. These days, the power lines are on the ground, so we don't see that anymore. Uh, but this was a very interesting observation. So the Shizhou, I told you that in old days, they made it into Shizhou Chang. But it was somewhere around 1930, 40, 50. Some Korean composers wrote Korean art songs. It's usually sung by classically trained uh, musicians. So the lyric is Shizu. Thank you. 
you up But when I wake up, I feel more asleep than when I'm dreaming She left home, borrowed money, took a plane to a foreign land She worked hard for her young child, her aging mom, an ailing dad Now she's home in a body by a box of clone and modern day slave members wrote their own shijo and then they sang it. Uh, so Roberto was 12th grader and he said uh, he never won any prize and he said it, it is so great. Uh, I just wrote down what I had in mind all these years and it's amazing that I get a prize. And then it is made into songs. So wouldn't you encourage your student to try the same? How many of you may consider teaching Shijo? Oh, okay, so I have uh, this uh, USB drive that has all these songs and uh, PowerPoints and slides, and handouts, and teaching plan. So if you are truly uh, interested in uh, teaching Shijo, then uh, just uh, come and talk to me. I'll give you this and I can send you more. So uh, the next one, they, they used Hangjinis, that uh, famous poem, and this again they made uh, into the Uh, can write 
something, anything that happening today here or on, on the way here or back to your home, uh, whatever is in your mind. So if you can write and then you can share it with us and then share it with your students. And if you have any friends who teaches English and poetry, then uh, maybe you can pass this to your friends. Any questions? Yes. Uh, I, when you showed us um, the first Sinjo you played for us was musical, right? It, 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 so is that just that there is a style to sort of perform? But the one that was, took a long time to sing and you stopped it. Sorry, uh, Tom? The Korean art song? Not the one with the piano and the voice. Still American? Yes. Hang Jin Ming? Well, the question is, so you traditionally would be sung, you know, as opposed to just spoken? Is it, and is it composed, or is it a way of saying the, the, the style of poem? No, uh, so this was, in old days, they, uh, in old days, they sang Sijo or they wrote down. But in modern, uh, like a contemporary poets, they just write so for us to read. And then some musicians are interested in transforming into music. And we are uh, doing the project like making Sijo into hip hop song uh, just to uh, attract attention of the young generation. Because when you say poem, then they go. So one of the English teachers who uh, teaches Shijo told me that she teaches like 12th grader. So when she said, okay, today we're going to write a poem, then the, this the sports jack speak guys, uh, they go like, ah. Oh. So she said, uh, it's only three lines, and then they go, huh? Oh. And then she and they go, okay, it, you have to write 15 syllables each, is a three, four, 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 that is a four. And then they go like, oh, wow, that sounds interesting. So she said there are many students who never wrote uh, poems. Uh, they were able to write poems. And because of the forms, uh, people who like to write freestyle poetry may have a hard time you know, going into the form. But uh, people who never uh, wrote poems, this is a great way of introducing poetry. So we heard that from another teacher. So one teacher who lives in Indiana came to our event and they said, I, I drove three hours to come and talk to you because this is amazing. My, uh, my student who never reads and who, you know, not even mentioning the poem, and then he got hooked into Shijo because there is a form so she could, he could follow. So he, uh, he was, uh, supposed to submit one sheet of poem, that was an assignment, but he came up with three. And then ever since then, he reads poems, he reads more books. And so he said, this is amazing, so you should tell other teachers. Okay, any other questions? And then the information about the workshop in November is on your website? Yeah, I will also email you, there will be a, uh, Email, uh, mass emailing are going up very soon, so please uh, give, uh, give me your email address. Or oh, some people will send you uh, the information. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Park. Okay, uh, we will have five minutes break, and then uh, we will go on to the last lecture.